active job. Well, I think unfortunately a lot of companies that have adopted wellness, they've tried to do so um, on the cheap. And so they have what I characterize as check the box wellness offerings. And um, a lot of those wellness offerings are ones that in some ways do more harm than good. So if you're making people take health risk assessments and biometric screenings, and meanwhile, they don't feel cared for by their manager and by the organization that they work for, um, I think that that can feel really transactional and it can feel like, oh, my company is doing this only to save on healthcare costs. That's not because they actually care about me. And um, so it really has to come from that place of people feeling like that their organization and their manager actually cares about them. And I think that, you know, we've tried to look for shortcuts um, for a really, really complex problem, which is we've got this massive healthcare crisis, which is not only here in the United States, but in Canada and uh, increasingly around the world. And there are a lot of factors that go into that, um, one of them being the larger society that we live in. And so to a fault, I think we've really framed up health and wellness as a matter of investing in your own health and, quote, taking personal responsibility for your health and well-being, when in fact all of us are our arguably more creatures of culture than we are creatures of habit. And so I think we've focused um, and kind of blamed the individual too much. Um, it's your fault, you're fat kind of thing. <laughs> As opposed to really looking at the fact that we have a, a larger toxic environment and culture. And so the more an organization can think about optimizing the environment and the culture to make health and well-being normal and easy, and the less they kind of go after the individual, 